Oh, hi everyone. It's me, Bill, KC3RYS, once again coming to you live from the Ham Shack. Now, tonight I wanted to talk to you. Oh, hey, look at that. Already got a call coming in. Hold on a second. Hello, you're on live with Bill. Hi, Bill. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. I heard I should have a radio in case the poop hits the fan. Yeah, well, that's a great idea, right? You should. Right. Everyone said I should get the UV5R. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to use it. Could you help me? Well, yeah, that's a coincidence because that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Great. Thanks, Bill. And hey, in your last video, I noticed mm -hmm. there was a lot of glare oh, coming oh, no. off your <laughs> That guy, right? Hey, let's get into it. So this is the mighty UV-5R, and if you're curious, no, you cannot transmit around the world with it. You can maybe contact your cousin 10 miles away, or maybe a little further, but this is not a broadcast around the world type radio. This is a VHF, UHF radio, has what they call line of sight, so you can transmit about as far as you can see. That's one way to put it. You might be able to transmit a little bit further the higher your elevation is. So if you're at the top of a building and your buddy's at the top of a mountain and you can see the mountain from your building, you might be able to contact them. Other than that though, don't think you'll bounce it off the ionosphere or anything like that. It's not gonna work. That skill is for HF radios using lower frequencies than this guy. This is not a citizen's band radio or CB radio. Break away. This is a ham radio. It transmits and receives in the UHF and VHF frequencies. If you know what that means, you're probably a ham operator. And if you don't know what it means, then don't worry. All you really need to know is don't press the transmit button. To get yourself familiar with the UV5R, let's take a look at some of the buttons and switches. Obviously right here at the top, you've got your power switch. I've got mine programmed, so it says my name when I first come up. As I mentioned before, this is the button you press at one time for your local FM station. You hold it down, a long press, and you'll get the alarm. This is the push to talk button. You're not allowed to use it. This is the monitor button. When you press and hold it, it turns off the squelch. If you tap it, you get a flashlight. Tap it again, you get a strobe light. This is your VFO slash MR button. Nobody knows what that stands for, or maybe they do and they can comment. Pressing this will switch between frequency mode and channel mode. Channel mode. Now you can see on channel mode, I've got weather programmed already and I have a local repeater here. A and B tells the radio which line you want to listen to and you want to transmit on. So right now you can see I have this set to the weather station. It shouldn't be on the weather station. So if I press AB, you'll see it switches to my local repeater. Menu button, you can get into the menu button in another video. This video, I wanna keep it short, so I'm not gonna bother. And then you've got all your programming buttons here. And if you're wondering, if I can't transmit on this thing, then what can I do? I'm glad you asked. You can listen, and you can listen a lot, and there's a lot to listen to, so let's get into that next. First of all, you can listen to your local FM stations, which is a great thing in the event of an emergency. All you need to do is just tap it once, And you can see we're now tuned into the local FM radio station. The next thing you might want to listen to is your local emergency services. And the reason why I say might is because some localities have switched over from analog, which is what this radio is, to digital, which means it's encrypted and you just can't pick it up here. Best way for you to find out whether or not you're in one of these areas is you can go to repeaterbook.com and you can look up your local municipality and find out what their frequencies are for fire, police, emergencies, ambulance. You can find out all of that, or a lot of that, at either repeaterbook.com or radioreference.com. You can tune into any one of those frequencies and you can listen, but you cannot transmit. I'm gonna keep telling you that. Maybe we should drink every time I say don't transmit. Please do not transmit. In the event of a weather, emergency, you'll want to listen in onto the NOAA stations or the weather stations. You can buy radios that are pre-programmed with those frequencies, or you can use your UV5R to tune in those frequencies. Please do not transmit. You can find a list of the frequencies on the internet. You can type in those frequencies and you can figure out which one is your local one because they're not all local. Or you can program the radio to have those 
stations readily available for anywhere you go. You can find the NOAA weather stations at www.weather.gov. Another good thing for you to listen to is walkie-talkies. Walkie-talkies can either be FRS, which stands for Family Radio Service, or GMRS, which I forget what it stands for, but you can look it up. The real difference between these two, they both use channels which specify frequencies. The real difference is FRS is a very low-powered radio, and anyone can buy it almost anywhere. GMRS is a higher powered radio and requires a license from the FCC in order to transmit on that frequencies using that power of a radio. Please do not transmit. Anyone can get a license for that. There's no test. You pay $35 or something like that to the FCC. They will give you a call sign and you can transmit on those frequencies. However, you cannot transmit on those frequencies using the UV5R. Please do not transmit. There's a couple reasons for that. One is the UV5R transmits at too high of a wattage. Please do not transmit. And the frequencies for GMRS and FRS can all be found once again at radioreference.com or repeaterbook.com. Now what would be good to know is how to get those frequencies and how to get them into the darn radio. If you want to program this the easy way, you need to use Chirp. So in order to use Chirp, you will need to get a programming wire for your radio. The UV5R uses, this one's called, I think it's called a Kenwood connector. I'm not going to pretend I know things that I don't. And this is a normal USB. So with your UV5R, you open up this little trap door here on the side. You plug in the old wire. And here's a pro tip. When you plug this in, really, push it in there because if you don't you may not get a good connection when you order this wire be careful when you order it because there are counterfeit wires out there and if you don't get the right one it's not going to program make sure you get something that has a lot of good reviews that's probably your good wire so you want to plug the other half into your usb port on your computer and we'll pick up on the computer all right so i have a completely reset uv5r it's probably just like yours if yours is brand new I'm going to come up here to radio, download from radio. The vendor is Balfang. There's a lot of different vendors on here. If you have a different radio than Balfang, then find yours. And the model that I use is the UV5R. When I select OK, I'm first going to be told how to set the radio up. When I hit OK, you'll see it is now downloading whatever is on the radio into Chirp. All right, and here's our chirp file, and you can see there's only one piece of data in here, and it's on channel zero, and it's this frequency, 144.72500. So what we want to do is save this, because this is an important file. So let's say save as, and I'm just going to drop it on my desktop, and it's called Balfang UV5R. 2023 1128 which is the date that I'm recording this and I'll hit save. Okay, now we have the original file that was associated with the radio and it is saved safely on the computer. So now I'm going to go to repeaterbook.com. If you have a username and password, you can sign in. Otherwise, you just want to come down the left-hand navigation to North American Repeaters if you're in North America. Select what you want to do is a proximity search. You're looking for the repeaters in your area. If you wanted to, you could go to the state and drill down from there, but it's really not necessary. I think this is a better and easier way. I'm going to say Philadelphia. Philadelphia, PA. I don't need to enter latitude and longitude coordinates. My distance, I'll just say it's 15 miles. There may be a lot of them there in Philly. Now the band. The UV5R uses 2 meter and also uses 1.25 meter, or I'm sorry, 70 centimeters. The mode we want is FM. You can use, you can look for all or confirmed on air only and open repeaters only. This is just going to refine your search. If you're just looking at those that are on air, you can be sure you're not getting anyone who's not on air. Now you can see I've got a nice list here. Wow, should have gone smaller, but oh well. So I'll come up here to the bar and select on export 
and I'll select chirp. And what this is going to do is create a CSV file, uh, comma separated variables, I think. And um, it'll download it to my computer. So memory name one, memory name two, don't worry about this, don't worry about the sort order. I agree that this data is for personal use only and select download. And there she goes. If I look in my downloads folder, this is one I downloaded earlier, and this is the one from right now. So now we're back in Chirp, and what we're going to do is file, open. We'll go to the file that we just downloaded, and you'll see we'll get a brand new tab here. Th these are all of the repeaters that were downloaded originally. Here is the repeater name, indicating that it uses a tone. This is the tone value. It has a negative offset of 5, uh, and the power on it is 50 watts. So what we'll do is select all of these rows, and then hit Copy, and then come into our image file, and we will select Paste. Now you can see all the files that were in the CSV file are now in the IMG file, and the IMG file is what Balfang uses. Or I guess I should say it's what Chirp uses. So we'll highlight this top row that had the garbage in it, and I'll just select Delete and get rid of that row. Now let's get our GMRS stations. We're going to go to File, Open Stock Config, come down to FRS and GMRS channels. You can see our FRS channel is 462.5.62.5 and our number one GMRS 462.5.62.5. These are the same. Identical. The only difference is the amount of power. Grab our GMRS stations and copy then come back into our Balfang file. I like to skip a line and paste. Come back into our Balfang file, highlight the row, and paste. Now all of our GMS files, all of our GMS channels are in there including the repeater channels. Finally, we had also talked about NOAA. So let's come up here and again, open stock config, NOAA weather alerts. We're just gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna highlight all the rows. Copy. Come back to our Balfang file, skip a row, edit, and paste. Damn it. <laughs> Highlight a row. We'll highlight the row, select edit, and paste. And now we have all of our weather channels as well. Few more things we want to cover before we go. One is when you look at the NOAA or the GMRS tabs at the top of the page, you'll see you only have this option for memories. But when you select the IMG file that's going into your radio, you have memories and settings. We want to look at the settings. Basic settings from the left hand navigation, a few things I want you to look at. One is display mode A and display mode B. This is what will appear in the window of your radio when you're in channel mode. The frequency doesn't do me a lot of good. However, if I put the name, then the name will come up instead of the frequency. In other words, this name, K2CPD, will appear in the window instead of 445625. One thing you want to make sure of is do not check the Roger beep. People will hate you if you do that. Advanced settings. Okay, a couple things here. Unless you want to learn Chinese, 
Let's change the voice from Chinese to English. Under other settings, let's have a look here. Power on message one and power on message two. For power on message one, I'm going to put my name and power on message two, I will put my ham call sign. And I think that's about it. So we'll go back to memories. And now we're going to save this as 1128-2 so that we know this is our new file. Next, we'll come to radio, upload to radio. We still have our port. It remembers it's Baofeng UV5R and select OK. And now all of this data is being uploaded into my radio. And when it's done, my radio will be fully programmed for all of the repeaters within 15 miles of Philadelphia, PA. All right, here's our radio. Let's see how we did. Turn it on. Channel mode. You can see it came up showing my name as well as my call sign. Next, you can see Two. all of the different repeaters that I have programmed in here as well as GMRS1 through the end and weather. Let's see. 7071 46 at Mount Holly, 49 at Millville, and 51 at Atlantic City. Please do not transmit. And there you go. Now your radio is all set for emergency listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you watching to the end. And hey, have fun.